Welcome back to the third segment of uh, Super Bowl 101. Uh, we're going to take a look at some of the greatest pl moments in Super Bowl history. And we'll talk some more about today's game. Uh, but first, we're going to have our third Super Bowl 101 trivia question. And if you're listening in the first segment, you'll probably get this one. Who was the only player from a losing Super Bowl team to be awarded Super Bowl MVP? And I'll reveal the answer later in this segment. Well, now we're going to take a look, uh, a look at some of the greatest moments in Super Bowl history. Uh, first of all, starting off with Walsh's brilliant finale in Super Bowl 23 in 1989, which the 49ers won 20-16 over the Cincinnati Bengals. Joe Montana and the 49ers down 16-13 to, uh, to the Bengals when they got, to the, got the ball at the 8 uh, with uh, 310 left to go in regulation. Montana coolly slices through Cincinnati, leaving San Francisco with a second and two at the Bengals' 10 with 39 seconds left. After a short uh, drop back, Montana fires a dart to John Taylor, uh, in the back of, of the center of the end zone, sending off coach Bill Walsh with his third NFL title in his final NFL game. And that, that is one of the most memorable moments that I remember in Super Bowl history. And I was about, uh, about 15, 16 years old when I, when I watched that Super Bowl. So I, I remember that very well because Montana has been one of the greatest quarterbacks in NFL history. Uh, uh, now, uh, next, one we're gonna look at, next one we have is wide right, and that happened in Super Bowl 25 when the Giants beat the Bills 20-19 to, 20 to in 1991. The Bills uh, take the ball at their 10 with 2.16 remaining, trailing 20-19. Uh, to 19. Uh, getting, the, getting 33 yards... From Thurman Thomas, who is deserving of the game's MVP with 190 yards and a touchdown, the Bills move the ball to just inside the Giants' 30 with eight seconds left. The Bills, despite having enough time uh, out against a short sideline play to get the ball closer and trot out kicker Scott Norwood. Norwood saving... Uh, swings his legs, ex leg, excuse me, through the ball, but the 47-yard kick is slightly off to the right, handing the Giants the NFL title. And I remember that well, because poor Scotty, he did miss a field goal, and I would have liked to have seen Buffalo do it, but the Giants did win that one, 20-19. But he was one of the great kickers in the NFL, and Jim Kelly and Thurman Thomas were both, uh, Jim Kelly, one of the greatest quarterbacks, and wide receiver Thurman Thomas, he is also one of the greatest in the NFL. And as you know, Buffalo has been 0-4 in the Super Bowl. They are four-time Super Bowl losers. And this one we're going to go back and look at all the way back to uh, Super Bowl III, 1969. Namath guarantees AFL legitimacy, which was the New York Jets and the Baltimore Colts. And... It was, the Jets won that one, 16-7. Quarterback Joe Namath, days after rashly guaranteeing uh, a victory by his Jets over the 18-point uh, favorite NFC champion uh, Baltimore Colts, triumphantly trots up, off the Orange Bowl field, wagging his index finger. Namath consistent... Uh, consistent, uh, if unspectacular performance, 17 for 28 for 206 yards, combined with Matt Shell's 161 yards total, total yards and touchdown run, stuns the establishment and legitimizes the Super Bowl and the upcoming merger of the adolescent AFL with the longstanding NFL. And Joe Namath said, and I quote, if I hadn't, if we had not won that Super Bowl, I would not be where I am today, and that is absolutely true. And as I said, I quote you, I quote, "It's absolutely true." 
Next up, uh, my next Super Bowl moment. We have a couple more. Actually, I think this might be the last. This is one more. This is the last one that I have. And it is uh, Doug Williams. Washington Redskins race to history. Doug Williams. This is uh, actually Williams Redskins race to history. Doug Williams, that is, in Super Bowl 22 in 1988. When the Redskins uh, wall up their Denver Broncos 42 to 10. Doug Williams, as he has been reminded numerous times during the week, is the first black quarterback in the game's history, down 10 to nothing to John Elway and Denver on the sideline with an aching knee as time winds down in the first quarter. It seems Williams changes to be chances to be, excuse me, the winning quarterback are getting slim, but he guts it out. And takes, and takes the field in the second quarter, 15 minutes later, after four perfectly thrown uh, touchdown passes, Williams is a legend and a Super Bowl MVP as Washington shocks the world with a 35-point second quarter. And Doug Williams deserved that MVP in 1988. And the Washington Redskins surely deserved that Super Bowl. And I remember watching that well. And I was about 14, 15 years old in 1988. And uh, we're going to uh, get back to talking about today's game in just a moment. But right now, it is time to reveal the answer uh, to, today, to the third Scott Sports 101 Super Bowl trivia question. Who is the only player from a losing team to be awarded Super Bowl MVP? If you remember from my, my first uh, segment, when we looked back at Super Bowl V, which was Baltimore and Dallas, and if you said uh, Chuck Hawley, you are correct. Chuck Hawley, Dallas Cowboys linebacker, uh, well, Dallas Cowboys linebacker Chuck Hawley, excuse me, was named the MVP of Super Bowl V despite losing to the Baltimore Colts. I will have another trivia question in, uh, seg- in the fourth segment coming up. Uh, now, getting back to talking about today's game, uh, and uh, I wanted to just briefly mention that uh, with this game uh, coming up uh, in about three and a half hours from right now at 6.30, we are three and a half, three and a half hours away from kickoff, and I know we're all excited, and uh, we're all excited to find out who will receive the Vince Lombardi Trophy. Will it be Tampa Bay or Kansas City? Now, if you think about it, the Kansas City Chiefs have a golden opportunity, and I think they're going to get the win in this one. But Tampa Bay is really wanting to get the win in this to get the win in this one as well. Now. A lot of media is saying Tampa Bay <clears throat> because they feel Kansas City's offense is weak and they're saying Tampa Bay is going to get the win and that Casey doesn't stand a chance against Tampa Bay. Excuse me. And, uh, and a lot of people are also saying that... Uh, That uh, media is saying that Kansas City is going to get the win because they feel that Mahomes, that Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes are going to repeat as Super Bowl champions. So I think uh, let me know what you think. Do you think that uh, Kansas City is going to win and beat Tom Brady in the Bucks, or do you think that the uh, that the attempt that Tom Brady and the Buccaneers are going to beat Mahomes and the Chiefs? Let me know what you think. Leave me a comment on my Scott Sports 101 discussion page or at my website, scottsports101 at gmail.com. Now, I really, this is one of those games I think it's really going to be tight, as I've said before. And I think there's really going to be some uh, unusual plays in this game because both teams are really going to be looking to win this thing and it's going to be a tight game, no questions asked. But even though Tampa Bay is playing in Tampa Bay, I really do think that the Chiefs are going to get the win in this game today. 
And they, they've got to really slow down Brady and the Buccaneers. So we'll see what happens. Well, that does it for this segment. That wraps up the third segment. Coming up in segment number four, we will look back at some of the uh, greatest quarterbacks in Super Bowl history. So stay tuned as for more of Super Bowl 101, a very special Super Bowl edition of Scott Sports 101. 